Our app is done, but we're going to do a bonus video here where we increase the security of our application. Now, when we authenticated the user, we stored their token inside of a cookie, but we did it client side. So if I just open up the inspect and go over to application tab into cookies, and then I filter it for token, we can see here we've got our, our token available and it's on the our domain, which is just localhost here. But see this column here, HTTP only. So it's it's got a it's false. It's got no value here. So what this means is it's a client side cookie. And the problem or the potential problem with that is that if somebody can inject and run JavaScript like rogue JavaScript on your page, they can then just add and ask for the um, the value of the token. So with that value of the token, they could post it to, to their own server and now they can log in as you because they have access to your token. So we're going to fix that and remedy that by moving this token to the server. So making it HTTP only. So to do that, we're going to need to install a new package. So go to your terminal and we're going to add a package called cookie. And then after that, we're going to add a dev package for the type definitions of the cookie package. So we're going to say yarn add dash dash dev types slash cookie. So just let those two install and then restart your application if you have it running in another tab. So I'm just gonna get out of, out of this and I'm gonna say yarn dev again to boot this back up. So to move our cookie from client side into HTTP only cookies, and what that means is that JavaScript can't read the value of this cookie. It can only be read on the server. And the person, the rogue hacker, doesn't have access to your server, hopefully, so they won't be able to ever read your um, token. So the first thing we are going to do, I'm just going to close everything out, is we're going to create two additional endpoints. And these are server-side endpoints, so we're going to put them inside of API. The first is going to be login, and then we're going to create logout. So login will be called from the front end, giving us the token for us to set in an HTTP only cookie. So the first thing we're going to do are add two imports, next API request and next API response. And these come from Next.js itself. And we also need to import cookie from cookie. And cookie just gives us the ability to, to set server-side cookies. So now all of these um, API pages basically are expected to export um, a function that's going to receive the request, which is typed next API request, and the response, which is next API response. Like this. Okay. So what do we want to do in here? We've received the request and this may contain information like about the, what is the token itself that we want to put into a cookie and then response. So we actually use the response to set a header. Cookies are set in the header. So the first thing we need to do is what's the name of the header we're, we're setting and it's actually called set dash cookie. So what's the value of this header that we're going to be setting? We're going to use the cookie package and we're going to serialize a new cookie. So serialize, what does that mean? It basically just means putting it into the right format for setting a cookie via the response header. So we have to give it a name. It's going to be called token. We have to give it a value. So here's where we're going to put the value of the cookie. So in our case here, if we were to go back into application, filter to token. It's this crazy token in here. So where is that going to come from? That's going to come up from the client. They're gonna tell us what the token is. So we're gonna go into the request and the request has a body and the body is going to give us the value of the token. So next we're going to set a whole bunch of different options for the cookie. And we want to make it as secure as possible. So first, we're going to say HTTP only true. So client JavaScript cannot read the value of this cookie. 
Should this value, should this cookie only be available on secure connections? Well, yes, but locally I don't have a secure connection. So I'm going to say where the process.env.nodeenv is not equal to development. So if it's anything other than development, yes, it needs to be secure. How long should this cookie live for? We'll do that with the max age. We want it to live for an hour because that's how long the cookies or that's how long the cookies or the tokens by default from Firebase authentication last for. So here we're going to do 60 seconds times 60 minutes. That will give us one hour. So the same site policy. So there's a number of options here. We're going to go for the most uh, strict option. So you can only use this when the domain is the same. Same site, we are going to say strict like this. And what path is this cookie available on? We're going to say slash, meaning it's available on um, any path within our website. So I'm going to hit save. That's going to uh, reformat all of my code. And now I'm going to move over to the logout.ts. And logout is going to be so similar to login. I'm actually just going to copy and paste all of this over. So if logging in means receiving the token from the browser and putting it into a, into a cookie with this request.body.token, log out means unsetting this value, deleting it. But you know what? Before we move into log out, my apologies, we have to finish this response cycle. We have to, we have to return with a success and um, end this thing. So we're going to say it's a status of 200 and JSON, which will also end the request, um, sorry, end the response and send this over to the browser. We're just going to say success true like that. So that one extra line, um, finish off the response to the browser. We're going to come and put that into logout as well. So logging out, if logging in is setting this value in the token, Logging out means unsetting it. So we're actually just going to set it to an empty string. And we're going to swap out this max age um, value or property of the cookie because we, we want it to be deleted by the browser. And the way you do that is you can set um, you can set a date in the past. You can say that this cookie expires sometime in the past. So one way you can get a date that expires in the past is to just say, new date with a value of zero. So this means zero seconds from the Unix EPOSH date. Basically it sets the date back to 1969, definitely in the past. And that will trigger the browser to say, Hey, this, this cookies in the past, it's expired. Let's, let's delete it. So what we're going to do is replace this max age with expires. And we're going to say that it expires back in 1969. Cool. So the only two differences between this um, login means set the token, logout means set it to empty string, logout means expire it, login means set it to be one hour in the future. So those are the two endpoints, but where are these actually called from the front end? So if you remember one of the earlier videos, we had use auth. Now in use auth, somewhere around in the beginning or in the middle of this, we set up this firebase.auth.onID token changed, where Firebase basically tells us, hey, the user either logged in or they logged out. So if there's a user, that means they log in and we call this function set cookie token. Otherwise they log out, meaning remove cookie token. So we're going to go modify these two functions where instead of setting a cookie client side, so that's what it does here, set token cookie, creates a cookie and, ex and, and sets it client side, and then remove deletes it. Instead, what we're going to do is we're gonna call those two endpoints that we set up, which will do the same thing, but it will do it on the server um, and make an HTTP only cookie. So we can actually delete this import and it turns out we never actually used get cookie get token cookie 
So go ahead, delete that too, and we're going to be left with just these two functions where we can replace setting the cookie client side with making a fetch call to set it on the server. So we can say make a fetch call to API login and then we're going to pass it a whole bunch of options. We're going to make this a post request. We're going to make it so that the type of request is a JSON request. So we're going to say the content type of this request is application slash JSON. And then below headers, what's the body of this request? We are going to JSON stringify an object that has the token. So this token that was passed in with set token cookie, we're going to pass up to the server, which will be received and written to this HTTP only cookie. So back here, we're going to convert this into a normal arrow function. And we're basically going to do the same thing. So we'll just do a copy paste, except we're going to make the call to API log out. And log out doesn't need anything. So we can just send up an empty JSON body. Okay, so everything else hopefully will work the same. What I'm going to do to begin with is I'm just going to log out Let's make sure there's no token cookie. So we're good there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in through Firebase. So I'm going to call, um, do that, put in my password. And what it's going to do this time is it's going to have posted that token to my backend. So we'll go, we'll look at the network request in a second. But you can see here, we still have a token cookie. That's great. But this time it's HTTP only, and it's got a strict same site policy. So we've sort of got the exact same functionality, but it's a lot more secure now because you can't read this from JavaScript. So if somebody can inject JavaScript on your page, who cares? It does nothing. So let's just go into the network request. Instead of looking at this, we'll look for, um, this is probably in the past. So I'm gonna clear this. Why don't we, log out again. So there we've got the log out request. I wanted log in. Okay, so we're gonna log in. Go here, log in. Okay, so I don't know why this one was canceled, but this one is looks like it worked. So here we've got a post to login. So what was posted? Our token was posted to the server. Now the key is the response. So you can see here the response has a set cookie header and in here we're setting the token, but it is HTTP only. So it's a lot more secure and our response from the server was just success. So if you were to log out, Clear these. I don't know why login showing up, but anyways, we'll click log out. So here we have a call to log out and you can see the response set the token to an empty value and it expired it. For some reason, this one's 1970, not 1969. But anyways, the cookie is gone because if we were to go back here, there's no token cookie. Okay, so we've just made our site more secure we can go in here and commit those changes. So we did tweak a few files. We added cookie and the types for that. We modified the token cookies file to post it to the server. And then we created these two new API endpoints, login and logout. Thanks for sticking around for this bonus video to add more security to our site. Hope you enjoyed it, bye.